Hello, I'm Gabe from Prismic. Hi, I'm Gary from Distilled SCH. So what kind of company is Distilled SCH? So I suppose Distilled SCH, um, we have multiple brands. Um, so Dundee, Little Daft and Adverts. Um, they're online marketplaces and property websites in Ireland. So like Craigslist, basically. Yeah, the NUS. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to ask you, how does a company like yours manage design systems? Yeah, so recently we actually looked to replatform one of our brands and this this topic came up, you know, should we have a design system and how would we go about implementing this? So we um we actually had a little workshop uh, over a number of weeks to discover what would work best for us. Um, because we have multiple brands, we didn't really want to like have a have to build three design systems. So from a front end point of view, what we were focusing on was the idea of having a component library that was reusable and shareable but without actually tying any brand UI to it. So that way, you know, we could reuse it without on any of the brands and allow design to be ultimately flexible with it. Okay, that's interesting that you're separating the function of a component from the design. So how exactly does that work? Yeah, so if you take something like a, as simple as a button, um, we would add this to our component library maybe. Um, uh, we would extend it with props such as accessibility um you know if it was busy we might add an area busy label to it um and you know we might talk back and mm -hmm. say that the button's currently busy or loading and on click um, and on hover or something yeah, like that we, yeah we'd expose all of these but if you were to like if we were to then publish that and use that in a brand it would actually just render nothing on the page if we were to call this button so you know there's no ui whatsoever uh in the actual component library Right, so how does a designer then use that? Yeah, so for for a button example, um, a button simple, but if you have a gallery, for example, you would have like a next, a previous, and an image. So a, a designer would know what the requirements are, or the specification of a component, are, a component is functionally, and they can then design around that. And the UI can be whatever you want. Um, so going back to the button, for example, we would just style the button as per design and we would pass that styled uh, button to the component and that component would extend its functionality. Okay, um, cool. So how do you go about managing a library like this? Because I know it's difficult sometimes, people usually um, make a GitHub repository for each component to publish to NPM and then you use that and import that. Yeah, so that, that's a good question. Um, you know, uh, we use a tool called LearnAJS. Um, and we, we have a mono, mono repo. Um, so all of our packages live in the one GitHub repository, but each of the packages are their own individual package. They're each published individually to NPM, but from the one repository. And the reason we can do this is LearnAJS enables a lot of that and takes some of the complex management out. Cool, so maybe could you take me through how like a button, for example, uh, goes through this entire process of being developed um, the specification all the way up to seeing it on the page and maybe even include like the testing for it. Yeah. So I suppose like uh, any component will start out, the design team, product team and engineering team might meet and discuss what, what the requirements are. I suppose the button has been overkill, but we would still talk about, you know, what does it, what do we need? What's accessible? What, what accessibility, accessibility features could we add to this button? Um, you know, do we need to user test it? Do we need to validate it? Um, all of this is decided then we set about in our component library repository, we create a package, in this case, button. It has its own package.json file, its own version. Um, we would write the, the JS file for it, the React component, basically. Um, we would give it props. We would just render the children that passed in. We would write a test file, so we would test the component. And then we're using um, Storybook.js, and this gives us a sandbox environment. So what that does is we write a story file for the button. We then take the um, we take the functionality that we've just written and test out as if we were in a brand like how if we were to pass a button into it does it work as expected, so I think Storybook JS gives us this like UI development environment. Yeah, a for nice little isolation. Yeah, for a, for a sandbox that for something that doesn't have a UI. Um, yeah. From here, what we do is we publish that package um, to npm, uh, private npm, and then we'd move over to the brand. We would import this button, for example. We're currently using style components, but you can use, um, you know, CSS, whatever, whatever way you want. Um, we would style the button, style and native button element using style components, and we would pass this to our button component, which extends the functionality. And that way, 
if we use that button in another brand, we don't have to redo all this functionality. It just comes for free. Right. So all of the buttons in every brand website of yours has all like the same disability uh, ARIA labels. Yeah. Um, all the same kind of bug fixes, browser um, specific code, everything. Yeah. yeah. And the only thing that's different is you have to restyle it each time. But that was a decision that we made that we wanted each brand to be ultimate. You know, they wanted ultimate flexibility on whatever you wanted to do. Like a button simple, but when you take something like a gallery, you could have multiple arrangements of how that looks on the page. And I think once you get into those complex UIs, that's when the ultimate right. flexibility comes in. That's a really cool concept because now the designers actually don't have to worry about like, how do you program an image gallery? They just have to worry about, okay, I have a div here, a div here, and I can style it like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like when you look at the Komodo library, it's brilliant. There's no HTML whatsoever when you import them and you pass all the HTML from the brand level, which is which gives it the flexibility. So we use things like render props or higher order component, those kind of patterns that really enable this uh, this mm -hmm. this way of doing it. So a few more questions. So do you guys use these components for everything? That's a good question. I think, um, you know, what we're aiming to do here is abstract functionality or complex functionality so that we don't have to, you know, constantly redo the same functionality, fix the same bugs in multiple uh, brands. So the idea is, stuff like gallery pagination we have a form kit uh, for inputs and stuff like all of that goes into our um our component library but then at a brand level uh, like we might have 10 times more components because if we're just doing simple ui components it just makes sense to keep them within the brand because they're very brand specific you know we're not going to be reusing right. that it's just restyling at that point right and so when you go to manage like versions uh usually that's tricky because you have Issues upgrading. If you force an upgrade, you might break your website. How do you handle that? Yeah, so that's that's an interesting one. Um, you know, currently we're at six to nine months into this project, and we're using Sembar. Um, you know, patch major minor. Um, but as a safety net, what we're exploring at the moment is we've decided to move to fixed versioning for all our component libraries. So the process is we would publish um our component library. So Learner takes care of checking what was changed and asks you, are you doing a patch minor or major release uh, so you update the versions and release at this point then we go to a brand repository we would open a pr uh, pull request and update the version and then this pull request will be uh, tested by our qa team and ourselves to make sure that this is not a break and change and then we would release it and um, i think in the future we'd like to be a bit more flexible in allowing patches to flow through but mm -hmm. just at this early stage uh, we are doing fixed versions just as a safety net until everyone gets their feet. Yeah, that seems like a very maintainable solution. Well, thank you for sharing, Gary. Um, it was nice to have you. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me.